Scapade.com. Yeah. Straight to camera. Or to... Yeah. What's up? This is Trey Sons. You're watching BooseGapBay.com. Colombiano, yeah, I love that. I love her if she speak another language. She be doing things I never seen. I think I might have hit it in my dream. She drop it, man, she throw it. Yeah, she work it. So, uh, Trey Sons, nice to meet you again. Uh, you released Chapter 5 two years ago and uh, you had a big world tour. So when did you start to work on this new album? Uh, when did I specifically start working on this album? I, I couldn't name a date or anything like that, but uh, it was pretty uh, pretty fast. Like Musically, I, I never really stopped making music. So it never was really said that I this is the date that I'll start working on this album, or this is the album title, etc., etc. But uh, probably pretty soon after I got off the road. Okay. Like uh, I remember the first, the actual first song that I recorded was uh, a song entitled "What's Best for You," mm -hmm. and uh, the second one was a song entitled "Smartphones," and that was uh, a little over a year and a half ago. Okay. And uh, what is your process? Do you work uh, first uh, with music or you write just ideas like that? Uh, the process changes. It varies depending on the song or the emotion that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so I have songs in my phone that I've sung to myself that I've never even put to music. I have um, ideas that I've written down that uh, eventually become song lyrics or uh, I'll even sing melodies and they'll become beats, you know what I mean? So, okay. And sometimes it's like, nah, nah, the beat came first and the song came second. Okay. Uh, but it varies depending on what it is. Okay. And how do you came with the idea with nah, nah? Oh, oh. oh nah, nah, nah. Put your, put your hands in the air if you love it. If you love it, oh, nah, nah, nah. Keep your, keep your hands in the air if you're spending the night. Oh, well, Nana, uh, shout out to my man Sam Hook. We actually wrote a lot of this album together, mm -hmm. uh, probably at least five or six songs. And uh, Mustard actually was in the studio and he, he played the track. And uh, instantly we, we came up with the idea to, to take something classic mm -hmm. and, and reinvent it. Uh, the hook came first. We played a little basketball on the 2K uh, and we did the verses. Okay. And it was, it was really fast, man. It was like. Uh, it's like a 20 minutes for each piece of the song, probably. Oh, okay. And uh, it's a mustard beat because you are known to not work with a uh, big name producer or trendy oh. producer. Right. So why do you choose this time to change the formula? Oh, I've been living in LA for about a, a year and a half now. And, um, you know, uh, the, the vibe that his music gives, just being out there and, and living a life, being, uh, listening to LA radio, being in the clubs out there, you know. Mm -hmm. I've watched and witnessed his sound develop too, just from a few key sounds yeah. to you know chord progressions and, mm -hmm. and different things he's implemented within them. You know, we we kind of developed a, a work relationship via email and text where mm -hmm. he would send me tracks and stuff. And then uh, we actually only had one session together, and I recorded probably probably eight songs to my slip beats. Okay. Uh, can you talk about the video? Baby, I'm the one you like, yeah. I'ma give you what you like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'ma give it to you right, yeah. Best time of your life, yeah. Oh, yeah. Out of video, um, I think it's uh, one of my best videos to date. Is, you know, I like to be clever with the concepts, and mm -hmm. you know, so many things have been done before. Uh, I wanted to do something I hadn't done before. And, you know, you hit Nana, nah, you think uh, typical club. Yeah. Probably be the look, uh, or even a strip club, or you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to do something different, and uh, what I think we were able to accomplish is uh, something that was empowering for women, something that uh, showed me in a different position where I actually wasn't in control of the situation throughout the video, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it gave another uh, another promotional advantage, whereas though you had women in the video that had their own following. You know what I mean? Their own fitness following, their own uh, television following, as far as the Bella Twins are concerned. So, 
Alexander and Rosa Costa. See what's ahead of me, I'm gonna run. Cause I'm chasing for the sun, the moon, and the stars across all the galaxies. Everything is a match, but you and me. Now this game is this pain. Uh, so many, um, so many different avenues we could work with the video and I actually created edits for each woman as well like okay. you know, whereas there's the main video there's a version with me and Rosa there's a version with me and man code I'm gonna get to you right yeah. best time of your life yeah, yeah. oh yeah baby when you ready tell her where you get the check. check girl I know you ready I ain't even got a check. check you've been through the worst let me show you who the best you know I'm gonna get you right girl them boys to the left version with me and jazz oh na 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 Put your hands in the air if you're loving tonight. Oh, na na na. Keep your hands in the air if you're spending the night. Oh, na na na. Oh, na 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 na. A version with the Bella Twins and a version by myself, so. Okay. Great. Uh, yesterday at the listening, uh, I heard a song. It was um, a sample of a Biggie song, I forgot mm -hmm. the name. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you choose to, to reuse that song? Well, the difference in the sample and. Uh, it's not really um, a sample. Yeah, yeah. Like a it's it's in, it's like a it, the song contains interpolations of "Fucking mm -hmm. You Tonight" by Big and R. Kelly. Some say the X makes the sex spectacular. Make me lick you from your neck to your back to your shivering tongue delivering chills up that spine that ass is mine. Uh, and uh, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. That's that I was I remember back then when I, when I would listen to that album, just the fact that. I could say that and, and sing it, and the mm. song was just so clever. It was so blunt, so brash. The delivery was so crazy over this over this smooth R and B beat. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, much like Nana, it's reminiscent of something that people already know. It's something that I something that I love. Something that I I like the Fuji's the score, of, and Nana was uh, the first album I bought on my own. You know, mm. so. Uh, as far as the, uh, the, the that song is called Loving and Touching, and as far as that song, I, I saw a new way to give it new life and breathe new air into it, mm. and uh, I, I took that opportunity. Okay, and um, I noticed like uh, during the EDM craze, like uh, four years ago, mm -hmm. you were one of the only one who didn't jump on the bandwagon. So why? First question, and mm -hmm. how do you feel now? To uh, you know, the thing about uh, trends is they, they soon will pass, you know, no matter how hot they are. Uh, and it never felt right in my heart to make that music. I, I still was making a name for myself. I still was uh, fairly, uh, fairly, I, would, I wouldn't say new to the game at this point, but I was still at a point where as though I was making my imprint. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you switch your footing up while you're doing that, it confuses the audience that you're trying to you're trying to attain, mm -hmm. you know, and I know my fans love me for a certain sound, not to say that I'm bound to that sound and that I have to stay within it, or to discredit anybody that, you know, has uh, stepped outside of the creative boundaries, because I think it's, it's cool for everyone to do, as we are artists, yeah. but uh, I wanted to stay true to what felt in my, good in my heart, you know, if I have to go out there and sing songs that I don't really enjoy, you know what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. or something that I'm doing because it's a political move or because I think it'll save uh, this portion of my career or it'll boost you know this song to this level because it worked for this artist if it's not true to me I can't really mm. can't really get into it okay um, so are you aware that you're one of the few artists that can make a song with uh, my Carey right now summer days and summer nights when I felt you in my arms didn't I want And also uh, uh, rap on a song with the Nicki Minaj. Look at y'all worn out, hold out, slow out, put some walls to out, all y'all bitches. Look, look, yeah, look at y'all bitches. Look, look. look. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm pretty aware. Uh, okay. I think it's a, uh, it's something I've been doing since the beginning of my career, you know. And there's a lot of artists that can, can balance, you know, uh, the hip hop and R&B thing. Uh, now and I think it's once again it it shows that creative boundaries can be stretched and to go further back into the question you asked earlier about the, the Biggie rendition I used to love that about R. Kelly how he could 
write a song for Michael Jackson and, you know, write a song called Feeling On Your Booty or be on a song called Fucking You Tonight and, mm -hmm. and then be on a song called I Believe I Can Fly, yeah. you know, You're My Angel. Like, cause the thing about uh, music and, and people that we, we try to differentiate as fans and as critics is that, mm -hmm. you know, people have millions of personalities and millions of emotions going through them mm -hmm. at any given point of any given day, yet we expect uh, artists to do one thing. And that's kind of that's kind of like wow to me because as artists we probably are the most creative people that go through the most mood changes and swings and have the most different emotion emotional roller coasters. So to be expected to stay in, within a boundary is kind of wow. Okay, hey, what can we expect from this album, Trigger? Trigger, man, I'm very excited about it. It's all my truth. Uh, it's love. It's it's. Uh, it's disappointment, it's, uh, it's parties, it's what happened last night, it's what might happen tonight. It's, um, you know, it's just my life put in the song form. And, um, you know, I don't want people to think just because it's called Trigger, uh, which is one of my alter egos, that mm. the album skews one way or another. That's why I think it's important for people to hear the content because people can make their own uh, conclusions based upon the name of something. So mm. it's, it's, a, it's a Trey song album like any other, but 2014, what I'm living right now today, what I'm breathing right now today, mm -hmm. and uh, what I want to get to people right now today. Okay. Um, your first album came out in 05, mm -hmm. so it's going to be like nearly 10 years. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel? You feel like a vet in the game? or? Uh, I feel like I'm very, uh, very much still a student. Okay. I feel like I have a lot of knowledge, but I never think that knowledge has a cap. Uh, I think that uh, there's very, very much that I can still learn in this game, but I feel like there's a lot that I know. There's a, uh, I know what I want for myself. I know what I want for my team. I know what my fans want for me for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I don't know, I'm eager to learn. Okay. Um, you are from Virginia. Yeah. Like Timberland, like Pharrell, like uh, Chris Brown, like Missy Elliott. So, what is it so special? What's, what's so special in Virginia? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it might be the cooking. <laughs> I don't know. It's that, that country, that country that, that by the beach. It's because Virginia is so many different things in one. Like you have mm. a portion of Virginia that's uh, very close to DC, that's very uh, city like. You have a, a part of Virginia where I'm from, where Chris Brown from, where D'Angelo's from, mm. where it's, uh, it has a southern feel to it. You know, and you have a another part of Virginia that's by the beach that has a, you know, a coastal feel to it where you got Timberland, uh, uh, Pharrell, Pusha, all of those guys from, from out there. So uh, it's interesting you bring that up because just yesterday I, I mentioned yet again that I would love to do a Virginia collaborative project with all those guys, too much talent there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I've seen like lately you've been close with um, Chris Brown. Yeah. So what's the situation right now? Are you still contact with him? Just got rich. Took a broke nigga bitch. I can make a broke bitch rich. But I don't fuck a broke bitch. Uh, but Chris Brown and I, uh, we started out our, our careers at the same time. You know, around 2005, both of our albums came out. And we, we actually toured together. And you know, as young men growing up, you have to go your own way and learn your own way about life. So, uh, not to say there was ever a point where we weren't friends, but there was a point where we weren't as close as we were at the beginning or as close as we are right now. Mm -hmm. And I think as uh, we both come into our own, you know what I mean, as men, we, we realize that uh, friendship is few and far between in this game. And uh, uh, he's doing very well. Uh, he got his head up, you know, and to all the Chris Brown supporters out there, he, he definitely needs and, and loves the support that y'all are giving him. Uh, and that's my dog, man. That'll be my dog for Okay. You the one that's all about, yeah. You the one they never had, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the problems you done had, yeah. Lead them broke fellas in the past, yeah. Oh, yeah. Girl, you had good, but I could give you better. I'll have you thinking about forever. I'm make say, oh, nah, nah, nah. Look what you done started. Look what you done started. Oh, nah, nah. Oh, Nana, hey, about to spend all this cash. 